Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for stopping in at the Red Barn, checking in on what we're doing with the Ferrari Swap 914. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, please give that some thought, and it's real easy. Just hit that subscribe button, and you'll stay up with all the cool stuff we're doing here with this ridiculous build. Uh, for instance, in this episode, I've got to figure out what to do about coils and how to get them mounted. I work more on the fuel system. Uh, I got to figure out where to put the fuel filter. There's all kinds of fun stuff going on with this build. Hope you enjoy. Okay, time to make the return line. So first it was use the magic straightener to straighten out a length of tube. And now to work out where I want to put it. I think I'm going to run the pressure line on the inside, which means I got to make this one longer so I can get the fittings on here and still get wrenches on it and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start working out where I want all these bends to be. And after much finagling and bending, there is the fuel line setup. So you can see what the deal is with the soft line, right? Coming up out of there, it sneaks up here, comes through that gap in the tank, will come around here to the fuel pump, sorry, fuel filter, and then into the fuel pump. So there's the uh, under the gas tank view of the world. And what you're gonna see here is when we get back to the back, I decided to move the lines to that center hole because when they were on the one on that side, unbeknownst to me, you know, check things out when you're fabricating and maybe try to think ahead better. There's a seat belt boss right here on, on that side. You know, it's, it's right across the tunnel from this one. And when I was going through that outside hole, that bolt was dangerously close to being able to get to the fuel lines. So I put them in the middle. And yeah, I got to come up with a way to secure them somewhere inside the tunnel. But here you can see, those are just the notch heads. Those uh, line clips are just, you know, not they're not attached to the firewall or anything. This is just trying to figure out where I want to put them. And then I'm playing with a grommet to seal everything going into the tunnel. But it's pretty tidy. And I also decided to twist the line. You can see and clock those things over, you know, to 130 ish um, So that when I'm going through the access opening, I don't have the line sitting right there and then fuel lines coming up because I got to get up to the fuel rails and then the, um, pressure regulator is going to sit right about in there somewhere. So I just aim those lines more directly at the at the regulator and that's easy enough to they're easy enough to twist so if I don't like how they're clocked I can easily clock them. And then what else? Now I'm playing with uh, something that's super fun and that is the coils. These Ferrari coils do not have igniters in them. And so I need to replace these and I don't want to run any kind of, I don't even know, I mean, I'm sure you can get like an off-board igniter setup, but uh, interestingly, these are Nissan 370Z coils and the, you know, you can see obviously not the same mounting, not the same clocking. This is a slightly smaller diameter bolt, circle two, um, which is fine because you know, firewalls here, I want my wiring to be going this way. I don't want to route it around. And I, so these, this angle doesn't really work great for me anyway. So the nice thing about that is I got to come up with a different mount. So I'm just playing around with basic shapes to try to get, you know, where's this angle that I like and you know, what's the really, what's the bolt circle and how does this fit in here and all that. So uh, almost done with this and uh, another job for send, cut, send. I just, th I can crank this out on the plasma table, but um, I can, you know, order something from them that's got a threaded boss already put in where I need the bolt. You know, I can get them anodized and in comes a product completely customized to my needs. And I don't have to do everything. I just have to design it. So anyway, uh, this is coming along. So good, you know, ignition, fuel, working on the intake. We almost have air fuel spark. We're getting there. Okay, another all over the place episode. I'm going to now work on mounting this fuel filter and I kind of want to put it in here-ish somewhere. Um, but what I got to do is that's the factory. So I have to cut that out of the way. So let me get that out of here. Hey, 
it's the middle of a hundred degree heat wave and this is uh, not, not fun. But the reason I like these belt sanders, as you can see, is you can sand down through the spot weld and leave the spot weld on the parent material and then come back and just grind that down very carefully and not take any of the parent material out of there other than a couple of little accidental wowies, but those will disappear with the, with the sanding. So uh, yeah, another Harbor Freight shout out. These things are great little belt sanders. Uh, but again, I mentioned this earlier, 3M Cubitron abrasives are the way to go for this kind of stuff. These things are, the, the, the tool is nice, the abrasives make all the difference. And then there's that, all those welds cleaned up. And then I went after reshaping this thing. I added a, uh, a flange onto it, which I'll drill for some rosette welds, and just kind of re-tipped it up to make it fit. And it sits, it's gonna sit right there. And it almost looks factory. <laughs> but anyway, that'll sit right there, and then the, uh, the, the fuel filter will mount to it. So I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out. Okay, a little clarification. This is the windshield washer bottle mount that I cut off of here. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was the brake master cylinder mount, but that used to live over there. Anyway, so I took that thing and I cut it in places and rebent some stuff and made a little mount that I then spot welded onto the bottom. And now I have this cool little mount that lives right down there like that. And with a little niggling, the fuel filter sits right, right like that. And it's aligned with the car. It probably doesn't look like this in the video, but it's aligned with the, uh, the hood opening line. And it'll sit here like this. This isn't the only, I don't have the right fittings. And so all I had was a 90. This is obviously not gonna be what I use. Um, so a 45 or a 60. We'll get that thing pointed right where I want it. And then if you look around the backside, I think that's a 120 and it aims it right down into the gap, right where I want it to go. You can even see the other line poking up. Not that they're gonna be joined. I'll make a new fuel line for that. But there you go. So that is gonna be the, see, look at that, all nice and aligned. That is gonna be the fuel filter mount. That's where this is gonna go. And you can see the right angled fitting here is just gonna point right over here. Now, one thing I am gonna do, and I've got a call in with the uh, the Phytech tech support crew on this, is it appears to me, pull this out of here. These hoses, one for pressure and one for return, there's no difference between the two of them, except for where they exit the top. And I did a little uh, suck and blow test on both of them, and there's not like there's a check valve in either of them for you know, any of that stuff. So I'm gonna take this line, which is currently marked as the return line, pressure and return, and I'm gonna make it the pressure line. So it'll come from here, run across to the fitting here, down in there, back to the motor, back on the return side. The return line then can sneak up right underneath here and not do a crisscross and come right back and plug into here, and this will be the return. Plus I'm not wild about this decal and this color, so I think I'm gonna uh, scuff this off and have this reanodized black. Uh, I think, I think, I think. But there is the fuel pump, or excuse me, fuel, well, yeah, fuel pump and fuel filter. Now I'm gonna start making lines. All right, time to make some fuel lines. And I'm gonna use the same nylon, but uh, stainless braided internal line that I used in LS build. I like this stuff, it looks nice and all that good stuff. And it's rated for the fuel, blah, 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 blah. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit out. And uh, I did a measurement of the line that I need and 24 inches will get me started. I always cut a little bit long because until you get it completely exactly fit, uh, I like to be on the cautious side. And the good news about this table is that's 24 inches right to there. So even with that, I'm gonna use a little bit extra. And then I just use a bit of blue tape to wrap where I want to cut it. And this just helps this cloth from fraying. So a quick wrap there. And then what I've found works pretty well, in fact, is just a good old uh, cutoff wheel. 
the key is to keep it 90 to the tube or to the line. All right, and there's my tube. And if I pull the tape off, I can now put this in the fitting. I'll show you how that works. All right, first hose end. This is a Dash 6 AN fitting, and there's a bunch of different kinds. You guys are probably familiar with the ones that, you know, you gotta peel back the braid, and you gotta put the olive around it, and get the olive over the inner liner, and on the underside of the braid. I just prefer these. Um, they just are a lot, they seem a lot simpler to me anyway. So, what I'm doing over here is I am just getting a little bit of lube. This is some Earl's fitting lube, essentially. And I'm just gonna put a little bit inside this fitting to help it get over the hose. And then this piece just goes, the hose just gets shoved up in there. And it's hard, it's gonna be really hard to show you, but it fits up in I doubt you can see up in there, but there's a little ledge and you can see that the hose is in the appropriate position. And with that done, then we have these aluminum jawed AN fitting or AN fitting vice jaws. So we can grab the fitting. And then what this piece does is it's gonna go down, it's gonna go down between the rubber liner, which will go and spread out and then it's gonna pinch it outward against the body of this other part of the connector. So let me get a little bit of lube on here to help it slide into the rubber. And then this just starts to get threaded in here. Now, the only, well, one of the important things is to keep the hose, whoops, pushed up at the same time that you're tightening this down into it so it this tightening action doesn't push the hose out. And then it's a simple matter of cranking this fitting down into it. And there is one, there is one hose end ready to go on the car. Pretty cool. And then in the car, this is my supply line. Pull the cap off of here. Put this line on. And here's the hole I mentioned in an earlier episode. I think you can see that, but that's the hole I can get in here from under the car with the fuel tank in here if I needed to take these lines off. But it's easy enough to get the tank out. So that gets tightened down. And then you can see what I'll do is I'll have a couple of those notch edge clamps to hold this line against the, the body of the car here so it doesn't interfere with the gas tank. And now I gotta do, I should probably bolt this thing on here, but you can see the idea, right? Is just to figure out the length. So it's got a nice relaxed fit into this end or into this hose end. And then I'll go and put this actual hose end onto this line and I'll have my from fil fuel filter to hard supply line hose done. So let me go do that. And you probably noticed that I wasn't using an AN wrench on that last one. Sometimes these fittings, the, the fitting that I'm putting on right now, the actual tightening on to the to the item that you're hooking the line to is the AN wrench size. But sometimes these fittings themselves are slightly different. Um, the other thing that you wouldn't notice is this hose end is what's called a twistable. So like, oh look, it's not pointed in the right direction, right? Well, I can twist the fitting without messing with how it's uh, you know affixed to the line. And you can see that we now have our pressure line in there. And like I said, all I really need to do is clip it here or here, probably here because that's the inner fender. Uh, and then this line, we'll do a crossover underneath here and it'll come back up on the inside 
and get to the gas tank, this will have a 45 to the pump. But there's our first line. So now it's just a matter of working out where everything's gonna go uh, in terms of you know what fittings I need, all that good stuff. And I will have the front part of the fuel system finished. Well, imagine that. <laughs> as cool as that mount is, it was looking crowded to me and I was not happy with it and I played around with a bunch of different things. And of all things, check this out. It's gonna go under the fuel tank. And one thing to note is I can still get to things through the original, well, that's not original to this car. The late model 914s had the fuel pump up here and they mounted the fuel pump to this removable cover and you could just, you know, get to it. So while I'm not going to use that as the mounting location, I am going to use this as the location for the fuel filter. Now, yeah, there's going to be some 180-ness going on here, but what's nice about it is it just tidies up the entire sort of situation. You don't see all this. All you'll see are two lines leaving the fuel tank, uh, and that's it. So what we'll end up with is out of the pressure, you know, out of the fuel pump, sneak down in here into the filter, 180 out of that, 180 into the pressure line. The return line will just simply come back up and back into the pump. So a little bit busy under the tank, but all of that stuff's invisible. And it's not like I'm gonna be changing the fuel filter that often. And if I do need to service it, remember, I have the fittings, the factory fittings on the bottom of, the, of that tank. And what I'll do is I'll just cap uh, I'll plug them both, obviously, but I'll make it so that if I need to drain the gas tank, I can quickly drain the gas tank. And the other thing you can always do is, you know, hook up a separate line to the outlet up here at the pump and you can pump the tank dry or dry enough to remove it. So if I do need to service that thing, I need, I can service it, but it gets rid of everything up here. I'll have nothing to look at. Um, hidden is always good. So, uh, yeah, I just made wah, this little bracket that allows the nuts to be welded on and steps up and it'll just be spot welded right down into that location. And yes, I checked, it clears the sway bar. That's what that hole is there in the fender. So it lives under the sway bar, clears the gas tank, and I think is a nice, tidy, invisible solution. Yes, we won't see all the great porn tech of the radium stuff, but it is what it is. So with that, we're gonna wrap up this episode. Thanks for watching, take care. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, tell your enemies. And uh, everybody take care. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.